So hey folks, I'm down here at the hangar. Been gone for three weeks. Went to see the uh, eclipse. That was fantastic. Had a really good time doing that. And I just got to the hangar and look at some of the developments that have been going on here. One of them is... So while I was gone, Jan got the, the uh, right brake, or the left brake, excuse me. Jan got the left brake all put together and has it all installed. The only thing we have left to do is uh, safety all of the, the nuts. Uh, and in other news, we, uh, I found out that we have, we have the nose tire, we have our wheel, and we now have a tube that will work with that tire. However, we're talking about changing the nose wheel over to something a little more conventional and tubeless uh, from what I've learned that we can install a uh, main wheel and tire off of a Convair 240 um, and have to make some modifications, the spacer and a taller hubcap, but uh, apparently tracks a whole lot better than the diamonds. I mean, I love the look of the diamond tread, but uh, they're basically for unimproved uh, dirt runways and and unimproved runways. So, um, yeah, I'm real happy about that. If we have to, we can use this. But in the meantime, I, uh, we're going to be doing some searching and see if we can find a wheel and tire that will be more conducive. The other thing about it is, is that the Convair wheel is supposed to track better. Uh, A26s with this kind of tire has a tendency to have a, a wheel shimmy as it's going down the runway or in the taxiing. So the Convair tire is supposed to help eliminate that. So we'll get the, anyway, I'm gonna go to work, we'll get this, uh, uh, both of these brakes safety and then uh, go on to the next thing. Okay, so I got uh, both of the brakes all safety. Uh, the only thing I have left to do on the brakes right now, I need to hook up the hydraulic pressure line. <coughs> so here's the pressure line. I got to hook it up to that fitting. Well, when we were done doing the pressure test, the brake's still loaded with fluid. So I'm gonna gonna dump the fluid and then I'll get this hose hooked up and we'll be ready to stop this thing when we get to that point. So hang on a minute. Okay. All right, I 
kind of get another wrench. I've taken the fitting out that Jan had used to, to pressure test this because it was a different size hose. Now I can hook this hose up. to the other side and do exactly the same thing. Alrighty then, on to the next project. Another work day at the hangar and uh, still working with the life raft door. And we learned a couple of things I didn't know before. Um, John Egbert, John Egbert took some time to take this home and polish it. Now it may end up getting uh, painted but one thing that he found he started getting the riffraff off of it and found these now we at first thought they were replacement buttons to open the door but then he discovered that this is actually a window let me aim this right this is actually a window that you can look down inside when you're getting ready to pre-flight the airplane to make sure the lock pins are in. Now I've been working on polishing these things. They've been so attacked by the sun, I'm trying to work them down so they're more or less flat. This one's looking pretty good. And I'll get some finer grit sandpapers and then some polish and get them polished out we'll see what they look like but i'm i'm it's amazing and then there's another one that was a window so you could see the life raft inside of the box i verified this a little while ago with a gentleman i've met and he's restoring an on-mark invader like ours and he was picking up the wings and went out and looked at it. He's got the box. And the one was a window and these were the sight glasses. So, pretty cool stuff. I don't think we'll ever have a, a life raft in there. It'll probably be for oil storage and tools and stuff like that. It's a, it's a pretty big box. I think you've seen it in other videos. But anyway, cool stuff. I'll get back to you when I get some more done. Okay. I think I've made significant progress. I haven't touched this one at all. This one, I've got it fairly flat. I've used 220 and 320 grit paper. And I've got it looking like that. This one, I've actually, I still got some polishing to do on the outside. But I've been cleaning the inside and polishing it as well. And now you'll be able to, hang on, you'll be able to see 
when the pin is engaged from the when you stow the door anyway I'll keep working on it Well, I don't know if you can tell the difference. Uh, still have some work to do on the outside. But that's... Uh, come on. I don't know if you can see that or not. Hold on. I know this thing is still pretty scarred up on the outside. I've got to get some finer grit paper, but... Um, at least in, in real life I can see this really well and we'll be able to ensure that the pins are locked when this door is closed anyway I'll have to get some some other grades of sandpaper to get this really clean but I'm really happy with the results that we're getting from this so stay tuned so I'm here again to do some more polishing on these windows to the world and I brought in some different weights of, of uh, sandpaper and some Dremel polishing tools We'll see if we can't get this crystal clear. Okay, this is how I left it yesterday. And you can almost see the, the head of the pin going through there. Here's, here's what I just did. That's fantastic. You'll be able to see that real easy. Um, What's that? I'm videoing. Thank you for flying with us and have a pleasant day.